Well, I loved your first book, The Emperor of All Maladies. I was excited to see you found time to write a, another one. The, the first book, there's a long sort of history of trying to understand cancer. But this book, Gene, is more about the future than, than Emperor. 50% of this book is in the future. What happens now that, that the human genome has become mostly readable, the central question in this book is, you know, when a machine starts to understand its own code of instructions, what happens to that machine? Does it change its code of instructions? Does it learn to limit those changes? Is that limiting of the instructions part of the instructions themselves? <laughs> that's the central sort of animus of this book. Yeah, to me that's such a fascinating question because it would almost seem cruel not to fix cystic fibrosis or a variety of even more rare diseases. I think these are powerful technologies and dangerous technologies, and the conversation has to be quite wide. But now the technologies are getting to the place where that's going to become technologically possible, I would imagine, in the next 10 or 40 years. Most of the stuff you hear about is, is pretty much on the side that you consider positive, like the disease type editing. For our patients, I can see a roadmap in which the use of gene editing technologies could have therapeutic implications. One that's of interest to our foundation is HIV. Although a very tough one that's probably pretty far off is whether you could edit people's immune cells so that they're cured of HIV. Again, the questions are scalability, you know, how expensive is it going to be? And the perennial question, what are the off-target effects? Are there unintended consequences that we don't know yet? We will know, at least for some cohort of, of human beings, as early as two to three years. What percentage of your cancer patients now would have some type of sequencing done to, to help guide their treatment? So for blood cancer, I would say some type of sequencing, I would say it's coming up to about 89%. Wow. And that's because in some cases, you'll actually change the treatment, which drugs or how you go about it based yeah. on that data. That's right. That field is in its infancy, um, and I think there's been a lot of hype around that field. Being able to use genetic and genomic information from a tumor and using that to understand therapy or to direct therapy, I think is an idea which has deep biological justification. It hasn't come about yet because the technologies aren't there yet, so we shouldn't be selling the idea, as it were. Uh, it's a research project, but it's a very valid research project. It's one of the most valid research projects in cancer. We need all our skills, all our wits, to understand what happens once we start changing or beginning to change the instructions with which we're built. Thank you.